Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we'll be talking about apps for college students. My name is Ashley Roki. And I'm Guy Trainin. This is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're going to talk about some apps for college students. So in a lot of colleges, and definitely here mm -hmm. in our program, you are required to get an iPad to be part of the elementary education program. And the question is, what apps do you have to have? What will be the most helpful? So that's how we're going mm -hmm. to start. And you go first. Okay, the first app or apps I want to talk about is Google, like Google mm -hmm. Drives or Google Docs. Um, this is necessary, I found, because a lot of teachers are switching mm -hmm. to using Google Drive. So that's how you get all your information. That's how you share information with your teacher and other cl um, classmates. So I think that's absolutely necessary. So I'm going to open my Google Drive just to show how much mm -hmm. stuff I've actually done on here. So it's really important, I think, because this is a lot of stuff. Yes. So and one of the things you can do is organize it. Organize, yes. And it's very easy to share mm -hmm. that way. Um, sometimes email is a little bit harder when you're sending documents. Sometimes you might not be able to open them. Mm -hmm. um, this way, it's for sure that you're going to be able to open them. Okay. And so show us how you share a document. So if okay. you've created a document. And the other thing is, if you have Drive and mm -hmm. you want to do something with Google Docs, you're going to have to download a, that as a separate app. Okay. So you'll have to download Google Docs. Let's try sharing something here. Okay. We'll share the butterfly cycle. <laughs> So this is a document you created and now you're sharing it mm -hmm. and you can share it with peers or you can share it with uh, somebody who's the instructor in a course. Mm -hmm. So to share, you're going to click on this little icon up here mm -hmm. and just simply type in an email. Let's see. Share it with you. Okay, and what you can see on the side is you can share with rights to edit, mm -hmm. with rights just to mm -hmm. make comments, or just to view. So there are three levels and they allow other people to do more or less on that document. Right. And so now, two things happen. I will get an email mm -hmm. saying, Ashley sent you something and she wants to share it. So. I can log into my email and I see that there's an invitation to edit. I say open in Docs and it immediately takes me into the uh, Docs. Right now it's taking it online, but I can use the app, which I would rather do mm -hmm. because it's easier that way. And I have access to the same exact document and I can make comments or if I'm an instructor and I want to grade there, I can even uh, grade there. So uh, it's opening up. And again, this one has multiple pictures, so it takes a little bit of time to load. You can see how it's coming up, but this is a great way to have access to data and I can uh, immediately write comments, add something, or if I have the rights to edit, I can also share it down the road as an example or mm -hmm. with other collaborators. And as we've talked about before in uh, peer feedback, mm -hmm. we've used, um, or I've used Google Docs a lot with classmates for peer feedback as well, and it works. Great. And it's especially useful because if you are doing work in a group and you all have to contribute to the same document, you now are not, sh not sharing the document in a way that allows only one person to work at a time. Everybody can work at the same time. Everybody can contribute and you don't have to wait for somebody mm -hmm. to do something so you can do your part, which is really useful. The other feature that can come up is that feature to be able to chat mm -hmm. live with yeah. the person on there. And again, we love it on the iPad, but you can actually use it on anything. So you right. can use it on an Android device. You can use it on your phone, although it's really hard to see. A, you can use it on a computer, so you're not limited to a specific device. So this one is Google Docs and Google mm -hmm. Drive. It's got lots of other features, and you can actually share anything that can be created inside the drive, right? So you can yep. share slides, slides. pictures, a, specific apps and add-ons that you add, you can mm -hmm. share as well. So you can, this can become really the hub of what you're creating. And again, the thing I like most about this, unlike other cloud services, 
is that you can work on the live document concurrently and not save new versions of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the one disadvantage is you have to really be online yeah. most of the time. You can download into your device and all of that, but really you want to be working online. So that's Google Docs. The second one I want to show you is Blackboard. Now, Blackboard is our learning management system, LMS. And so that's what our students use. If you go to a university a, or a college where something else is used, you want to get the app for that. Most of these have an app to them. And what you have to do is you've got to find the class you're in. So right now, I'm, I'm teaching. I'm not taking a class. But I am teaching 930. 30K, which is a doctoral class, but um, you can see that we use it across. And what I love about this is it gives you access to all of the documents. Mm -hmm. And you can look at the syllabus. If you just need a quick look at the syllabus, it's fantastic. And uh, as an instructor, I'm using less and less paper. So I would rather most of my students would look at this mm -hmm. because I can update it. I can make changes. There are always things that happen throughout the semester, new opportunities or ideas. So the syllabus is there, uh, announcements that you send to students. And again, right now we're in summer. School year will start soon for you. And so we get to see our students almost every day. But during the year when you're meeting only once or twice a week, it's really good to have those announcements come to you. And so you have access to all of these. What are your favorite features? Um, another feature I was going to mention that's mm -hmm. nice is the ability to email other mm -hmm. students within the course when you don't have their email address. So you just press send email and you say, who do I want to send it? And you can send it to everybody, mm -hmm. which as an instructor you often do, as a student, rarely, right. unless you've got some a mm -hmm. message for everybody. So you can do select users and find the person, even if you don't have their email. Now, most universities allow you to have access, so you can find their mm -hmm. email. But this is a much easier way yes, to do this. Really quick. And you can just select the person you want to send this to. And I'll send this to myself, just because that's going to be safe. And then you write the email, and you can edit it just like any other email. So it's very quick, and you can get there. Mm -hmm. The feature I like the most on this that I think they've done really, really well is actually the feature in a discussion board. Uh -huh. And that is the discussion boards actually are really easy to read on the, on the iPad. So you go to a day and you can scroll down all of the responses or specific responses. You can actually add your response or a, you can respond to somebody. So if you're required to participate in discussion and answer, all you do is press reply and here we go and you can participate in that discussion. And all you have to do is press post, and uh, you're done. That's very commonly used, and I love the mm -hmm. interface for that specific one uh, very, very much. I hope more of the interfaces around this will be like it. Mm -hmm. Another one is the ability to blog, so we can blog inside the class. Mm -hmm. um, often, I, I love blogging outside the class and with the world. But sometimes when you're learning, you don't necessarily want to share everything with the universe. And it's much safer to blog inside the class and be able to wander, make mistakes, and not worry about who's going to see this, because only people in the class will see this. So this is a way to manage that as well. And you can get your grades. Now, I don't know if you can. But I can't do that because I don't have any grades, because mm -hmm. I'm teaching the classes. So let's, let's try to show what that looks like. OK, so I have less options mm -hmm. than you. But um, if I just go to my grades, and it'll pull up all my grades. So, so you get to monitor exactly where mm -hmm. you're at, how many points you have out of how many. You can ask about it. You can, uh, can you drill down and see if there's feedback on Blackboard? Um, usually it'll be under here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can find a class that. Oh, so here's an example with more assignments simply. Yes. Okay. And here's a comment. Mm -hmm. So if there's a comment or feedback, it'll be right under. So it's a quick way to see 
what the teacher is trying to communicate to you mm -hmm. instead of just getting the grade. Yeah, and it, it is important. I mean, we, we do mm -hmm. as instructors now, I t I'm speaking, uh, we do make the comments so you, you'll pay attention. And those are actually more important more often uh, than not than the actual grade. I mean, we care about right. grades. But the important thing is the feedback so you can get better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about Blackboard. And again, if you, have, if you go to a place that has a different learning management system, you might want to check out the uh, app for that. Uh, the next app is yours. Um, yes, this app is it's dealing with having a scanner mm -hmm. on your iPad because a lot of um, people don't have scanners on their printers. So um, the scanner app that I have is called Genius Scan. Mm -hmm. there. But there's several scanners out there, but I've found that this one works best for me. Um, so you can see on here I've used it for several reasons. Mm -hmm. If a teacher needs a document that I can't get to them because mm -hmm. it's a hard copy, um, I just simply took a picture of it. So let's see. Took a picture of it and emailed it. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that. It automatically exports as a PDF. So. So the advantage of having scanner is that it changes it to PDF. It doesn't keep it in a picture format. Yep, you can uh, do either, actually. Mm -hmm. You can keep it in picture format or um, PDF. All right. So let's see how this works here. So if you just turn it on, um, hit the camera button. Here. Here, OK. We'll take a picture of another iPad. <laughs> OK, and yeah. you get the picture. And it gives you the option to crop it. Mm -hmm. And so we'll hit Use. And when it comes to this screen, a lot of the times it'll um, either do it like this or it'll mm -hmm. be in black and white, like a okay. copy. So you can choose, but since it's an iPad, I don't think it's showing up like that. So you can choose as a picture mm -hmm. or PDF, and then let's, you know, you just email it. So really simple, um, but very, very useful. Yeah, and especially as we're transitioning and we have mm -hmm. some people using paper and some people using uh, digital mm -hmm. and a lot of communication that is happening digitally, no matter what format we're using on, in our hands, it's actually very, very mm -hmm. useful to turn that into a PDF. And then, by the way, you can put it in your Google Drive as a yes. PDF and then manipulate it, share it in other ways. So there are lots of things that you can do with something like Scanner. Yep. Um, the last thing that I want to talk today about is talking about presentation apps. And my favorite is Prezi. I use it fairly often, um, but not always. Sometimes we use other things that are more, uh, that are simpler. So this is my uh, Prezi account, and I have quite a few uh, presentations that I've already made. Now you can make a new Prezi. And making a Prezi on the iPad is a little bit tougher than making it on the computer. So that's something to think about. But if you're using a template, and there are lots of very useful templates, if you're sticking to that template, it's very easy to do on the iPad. If you're going off template, or if you want something completely original, mm -hmm. I think you're, you're right. And we were talking about this before the show. It's easier to do on the computer. I, uh, however, have done quite a few because I was on an airplane and I could use only my iPad right. and it worked perfectly fine. But again, you want to make sure that you're comfortable and you're using something that is fairly simple. Right. And but the nice thing about it is yeah. having it on your iPad allows you to present it in mm -hmm. a classroom instead of bringing your computer along. Yeah. So and, as and long as you have the app, you can yeah. access your present. And then you're not tethered necessarily to the, your TV or your mm -hmm. projector. You can actually be anywhere in the room if you're working with a Wi-Fi connection and like we do with an Apple TV or you're working with a, with a reflector app or whatever you're using, you can actually uh, be anywhere and be mobile in your classroom while presenting or while sharing or while other students mm -hmm. do that. I mean, students, if you have multiple devices in your classroom, they can do that as well. So Prezi is great to do presentations. And what, we, what I love about Prezi is the visual orientation and the ability to tell the story, not just in words and pictures, but also in location. You zoom in, you zoom out. So this is a presentation we did a few years ago about iPads, surprisingly. <laughs> Who would have guessed? And that's a way to present information, again, with another dimension. You need to be thoughtful. And if you're working, uh, we work with, with kids as well, you want to think about what does that extra dimension actually do. But it's great. It's uh, something that you can use rather well. OK. And we're going to present one more app today. Um, uh, Google Slides is another presentation app that I've used. And this is an alternative to um, PowerPoint. 
and this is nice in comparison to PowerPoint because you can access it on your iPad again. Mm -hmm. And it's connected to your Google Drive, which I use a lot for everything. So obviously. instead of having a parallel account right. with Microsoft, because you can have a PowerPoint or PowerPoint like mm -hmm. apps, but then you need another account and another password and all of that. Here you have it all under the same account and password. Right. So it's simple. It's mm -hmm. just like um, PowerPoint, basically. We'll go into one of my presentations here. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's nice about this in comparison to PowerPoint is the ability to share once again oh, and okay. work um, collaboratively with more than one person mm -hmm. on it because this was a group project here. So, yeah. Okay. And it's very so simple. It's simple to use. Again, that sharing, that same. Uh, same infrastructure with all of the other Google products so you can move between. You can import uh, PowerPoints, you can import Keynote, so it will take them in and turn them right. into Google. Sometimes it makes changes because all of these work in somewhat different ways. Mm -hmm. What I love about it is the simplicity. It's easy to create. You just go for it and you've got it and you're done and you move on. Prezi requires a little bit more time and emphasis and thinking about how do you organize mm -hmm. things. So if you want to throw something and you've got class and you need to, to present and you have an hour, you probably want to go with Google Slides yes. and not with Prezi. Prezi will take you longer. It'll be more polished, it'll be more interesting, but uh, one of the most important things we learned earlier, I think, when we got to college is the most important thing is to be done on time. Yes. Uh, because if you're not done on time, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So today we talked about four different, uh, or more than four, but four general categories of apps that you want to have on your iPads before you start college or if you just got an iPad and you're bringing it with you to class. Mm -hmm. Incredibly useful and we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.